Hey, Doc Testa here, health and wellness consultant for Pine Pollen Superfoods and Train for Longevity. Today, I want to talk to you about belly fat, uh, the big pendulous abdominal belly fat that a lot of people in America get, men and women, and why it's so important to get rid of that because it's affecting your health, your longevity, and your sex life. It's such an important thing to take care of. So here's the deal with that. Belly fat starts to occur when we are consuming way too many carbohydrates, primarily, but certainly too many calories as well, which is a common occurrence in America. There's food everywhere. Everything is carbohydrate laden. Uh, even the GMO, gluten-free, all this healthy stuff that you see everywhere is largely lo loaded with carbohydrates. And when our body can't handle a lot of glucose, it starts to store it. First, it wants to push it into the cell to use it as fuel. And if it can't use it as fuel, it starts to push it into the liver and the liver gets fatty. You get fatty liver. Maybe you have fatty liver. Uh, and the liver is unhealthy and that's a leading cause of cirrhosis nowadays in America. Also then when it can't shove the glucose into the liver, it starts to shove it into the abdominal fat and we start to get this big belly of fat. Another organ that it shoves it into is the pancreas leading to diabetes. So when we consume too many largely carbohydrates and this starts to happen over I, I don't know, I mean, I see it at a younger age, but I certainly see it in men in their 30s, 40s, and 50s because they've had years and years of overdoing it, let's just say. And so uh, this sort of belly fat is a big risk factor. What's it a risk factor for? Well, it's a risk factor for diabetes, right? It's a, pre and if you don't have diabetes yet, you pro and you have a big belly, there's a big chance that there may be pre-diabetes going on. There's 90 million Americans that are pre-diabetic, and that is one of the signs. Um, it's also a risk factor for what's called metabolic syndrome. Metabolic syndrome is a, uh, a condition where there's hypertension, again, pre-diabetes, cardiovascular disease. This belly is a risk factor, it's telling you that it's a risk factor for health, healthy longevity, and your sex life. What's going on with the belly in sex life? Well, one, you can't see your penis, so you don't even know what's going on down there. But two, fat releases something called aromatase, which breaks testosterone down into estrogen. Now, if you're having erectile dysfunction uh, or loss of libido, as a male, you don't want estrogen floating around. That's not gonna help matters at all. It's gonna make things even worse. The other thing that occurs with fat in the body, particularly abdominal fat, is an increase in inflammatory cytokines, interleukin-6, which is known to uh, break down and disrupt microcirculation. Where is there microcirculation? In the penis. And so you've got two factors going uh, against you when it comes to abdominal fat and erectile dysfunction. So that, that belly fat is a risk factor for diabetes, pre-diabetes. It's a risk factor for fatty liver and potentially cirrhosis. It's a risk factor for metabolic syndrome, including hypertension, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and it's a big risk factor for your sex life, libido, and erection. So those are the big deals that are going on with a big belly. And it comes from, as I said, years of, and maybe not even for, for some people years of, but overdoing it with carbohydrates. Um, and that's refined carbohydrates. That's, you know, look at how many carbs you eat. I'll give some recommendations uh, throughout. Um, and so this thing, you know, just go in the bathroom, lift up your shirt, just look down, see if you can see your penis. 
If you can't, those things are, the, these are warning signs, right? Be aware. This is your body giving you signals not to put your head in the sand, not to buy bigger pants, not to buy a bag of your shirt, not to ignore it. These are the signs. If you wonder what your future is going to be like, it's all stored right here in your belly. Now, what do you do to reverse all that? How do you overcome this? There's a couple ways that work really well. But first, let me tell you, when I started on this journey, I was like you too. I was 50 pounds overweight. I had fatty liver. I had elevated triglycerides. I had uh, elevated liver enzymes. I was unhealthy. And I was going through a low point in my life, and so I was overeating, I was staying up late, I was drinking alcohol, I was eating just whatever I wanted. And, you know, look, I'm a doctor. Do as I say, not as I do. That was sort of my mantra. And it backfired on me, and, you know, I got 50 pounds heavier, and I had all these health problems. And you know what? No one ever asked me what I was eating. Nobody ever asked. All they were worried about was, do I have cirrhosis? Do I have liver cancer? Do I have hepatitis? What is going on here? No one asked, what the heck are you eating? I'm going to tell you, all that stuff, yeah, rule it out. But chances are really good that it's what you're eating that is causing this. So what did I do to overcome this? <clears throat> I started fasting, right? I started intermittent fasting. And I started cutting down my eating window to six to eight hours a day. Right? That makes a big difference. That reduces inflammation. Remember, inflammation is what's causing damage to that microcirculation in the penis. I started to um, eat better, right? I started eating more fat, lean protein, and I started cutting down on the carbohydrates. And that made a big difference. And so when I say low carb, look, I'm going to give you the liberal low carb, which is 100 grams a day liberal. There are doctors out there that treat all these conditions with very low carbohydrates, like 20 to 30 grams of carbohydrates a day. And it can be done, right? It can be done and you will start to see that fat loss. But the bigger game changer for me was when I started doing prolonged fasting. I did a five day water only fast and I lost 12 pounds. Where did I lose that? In the gut, the belly fat. I noticed it immediately on that fast. Now a five day water fast is not easy. I don't necessarily recommend it. And then I took the next step in doing additional prolonged fasting. And I started using a fasting mimicking diet where you can eat food, a whole food plant based diet for five days and your body thinks it's fasting. It tricks it into thinking it's fasting. And I lost another eight pounds there. And I repeated this fasting mimicking diet several times throughout the year while I maintained uh, a pretty strict intermittent daily time restricted feeding or fasting. And I only ate within a six to eight hour window. That prevents you from one, overeating, because you're only doing it for a certain amount of time, and I cleaned up the diet. I took a lot of the refined carbohydrates out. I limited it to 100 grams or less a day. I stopped eating late. I stopped eating three hours before bedtime. Um, and it made a big difference. I'm a year and a half later, I'm still, all the weight I lost, when, when I started this journey, uh, the 25 pounds, I said I was 50 pounds overweight. The first 25 took me about six years to get down. The last 25 took me about six months with this technique. And it's been over a year and I've maintained the improvement. I'm at my high school weight, coming from 235 at my worst to 185. And I do it with this routine daily. Here's the, listen to this daily time restricted feeding or intermittent fasting where I don't eat um, from seven at night till about 10 in the morning. And then I break my fast, breakfast, break fast with a nutritious uh, breakfast. This morning, two eggs, arugula, avocado, and 
a small amount of black beans because beans can be high in carbohydrates. I kept it below 20 grams. Um, and then I will uh, be done eating again at seven at night, sometimes earlier, um, rarely later. Sometimes I'll be done at five. Sometimes I won't eat after lunch. And let me tell you, there's two techniques to this intermittent fasting. Early time restricted feeding, meaning, meaning being done eating by three in the afternoon and not eating till eight or nine in the morning the next day has been shown to be beneficial at reducing insulin, glucose, inflammation, and belly fat. All right? So that's, that's a good, that's called early time restricted feeding uh, it, it, and you can be done early. Or what has also been shown as conversely is, like what I don't even know if it's called late time restricted feeding, but not eating breakfast. So not eating your first meal until noon, right? You could still be done at seven, but not eating until noon. And so you're getting two meals a day. So either one, either you finish eating early or you don't start eating until late. Both of those work for reducing inflammation, glucose, and belly fat while preserving lean body mass. So don't worry, you're not gonna get, um, you're not gonna burn muscle. Now here's the deal. Really, you wanna be done eating before bed, three hours before bed, so you can sleep well. Because poor sleep will decrease testosterone levels by up to 10 years. So if you're 50, your testosterone levels will be at 60. This is with poor sleep. You need REM sleep to build testosterone. You also will develop good amounts of growth hormone. You wanna maintain lean body mass? You need growth hormone. The other thing I would recommend along the lines is to work out in the morning in a fasted state. When you work out in a fasted state, You've burned through all your stored glucose and glycogen, the glycogen that's stored in your liver that's like storage sugar. You've burned through all the sugar floating around in your blood throughout the night, and you go work out, now what's your body gonna use as fuel? It's gonna start to look for fat and get your body into a deeper state of ketosis because it doesn't have glucose anywhere to burn. It doesn't have glycogen anywhere to burn. It's going to go for fat. And when you don't eat for an hour after your morning fasted state workout, you will build more testosterone and growth hormone. When you eat right after working out, and I know this might fly contradictory to what some trainers say, you immediately stop that process by increasing insulin levels. So you want to work out in a fasted state. So these techniques of early time restricted feeding, maybe skipping breakfast, having a shorter eating window of six to eight hours a day, reducing carbohydrates. I'm going liberal here at 100 grams. If you're really got a belly fat consideration, if you have health problems, then you might need a, a, a lower amount of carbohydrates. And then working out in a fasted state. But let me give you this caveat. Don't do any of this without consulting your physician. Don't do any of this stuff if you have diabetes and you're not working with somebody who can help you monitor this. Don't do that because while it's generally safe and very effective, some people need guidance. Some people need uh, oversight. And I want to make that clear here. Now, this is a lifestyle. This is not a diet. You're not going to do this for 12 weeks, lose that belly fat, and go back to eating pizza and muffins and brownies and cookies and scones and all this gluten-free, GMO-free stuff that if you look at the actual label, you know, there's a lot of carbohydrates in there. And they might show you that there's 17 grams and you're like, oh, I'm safe. Look at the serving size. That's a quarter of a cup. Tell me if you're really eating a quarter cup or you're eating four times that much and now you just got 70 grams of carbs in one meal. Don't snack during the day. That is another really good thing. You don't want blood sugar levels elevated all day long. That is another leading cause of this belly fat issue. And we've learned through 
the years that or we were told that we needed to eat six small meals a day that's the biggest crock going because that keeps your insulin and glucose levels at an artificially elevated state and what did i say the body does with all that glucose it shoves it into the cell if it can't fit in there it shoves it into the liver and get fatty liver if it doesn't fit there it shoves it into the fat of the belly and you get fat and then you become diabetic and then you become a huge cardiovascular risk factor you, it develops into heart attacks it develops into blindness diabetes develops into limb amputations this is serious stuff and it is life-changing so and again last thing don't drink caloric drinks why do you need an extra hundred grams of carbs in a caloric drink drink water drink black coffee, drink herbal tea, drink unsweetened uh, iced tea, but don't consume extra useless calories in drinks. If you're gonna drink alcohol, you know, red wine, dry red wine like a Malbec has very few carbs. Uh, alcohol, spirits, whiskey, same thing. Don't drink it with mixes. Now, I'm not even encouraging alcohol, but I know you're gonna ask, so I'm gonna answer it. Um, so again, what to recap, belly fat, uh, increased risk factor for diabetes and pre-diabetes, increased risk factor for metabolic syndrome, hypertension, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, serious increased risk factor for erectile dysfunction and um, uh, uh, loss of libido, and can be controlled with time-restricted feeding or intermittent fasting can be controlled with early time-restricted feeding be done eating by three in the afternoon or skip breakfast and don't start until noon can be controlled with fasting mimicking diets where you can eat but your body thinks it's fasting this is not a diet this is a lifestyle you want healthy longevity, you want a good libido, you want a solid erection, you got to get rid of the belly fat. Getting rid of belly fat is the biggest thing you can do to improve your health and reduce multiple risk factors for disease, morbidity, and mortality, and a crappy sex life. So um, again, Talk to a doctor, talk to somebody who's trained in this. If you want additional help, reach out to me. Uh, my colleague and I have an online coaching program and we're glad to work with you on this stuff. If you know somebody else that should hear this, please share this message with them. Make sure you share this, invite them into this group, help them become healthy. And ladies, if you're listening to this, help your man with this because you know, not only is he losing on the, on, the, on the libido and the sex, so are you. And so is your relationship. And so is the connection that brought you two together. So anyway, I hope this is helpful. Um, please share this out with other people that need to hear it or invite them into this group. We'll continue to provide valuable information like this. I hope you found this helpful. I hope you can get started on it today. Start today. Start with a 12-hour fast. Be done eating at 7. Don't eat until 7 tomorrow morning. All right. Thanks a lot. Doc Testa. We'll see you in the next video.